And then he'd go sit on Santa's lap. I understand that you wanted a brand new, um, you know, uh, Red Ryder BB gun. Oh, oh. All this Santa's so smart. And then you know what the sisters would say? Stupid boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they would get so. It is yeah, there. one of the things that's interesting here is that this idea of the, the kids sitting on Santa's list and lap, lap and telling them, um, listening to their wish list or telling them, um, it's it's now under review by some organizations in Britain yeah. and Switzerland. I know. Why? It, it, because there, there is more criticism of what's going on at Christmas now than there is praise of what's going on at Christmas. I mean... Let them have fun! I know it's fun. I mean... The picture taking didn't come until cameras were able to basically, you know, do like roll film and other things like mm -hmm. that. But I mean, I, okay, put it this way: I, I would have loved to seen a, a sixty or seventy year old picture of one of my brothers' sister going, oh. you know, that would have been a look. Because oh. uh, I don't, really? you know, I don't. You know, Actually, this is one that I didn't know. Well, they started, I guess, in nineteen eighteen. They did the Eaton yeah. Santa Claus parade and in Eaton's department store. So then. They made this huge display where he's what sitting up on the throne. Yeah. Yeah. Santa's Grotto or Santa's workshop where people would come and were they taking pictures at the time or just talking to No, they they were just talking because pictures didn't come until uh, until they were able to have cameras that you could basically um, you know uh, uh, you had like the the 120 the 620 and the 35s it progressed that way but it wasn't until you could get like a box camera with a roll of film in it that you could do it. And, and then it was like, uh, it wasn't, I mean, well, most people don't realize it, but Hugh O'Brien, that played uh, Wyatt Earp, created the uh, one hour uh, developing thing. When that happened, that opened up the whole world, which means they could basically take rolls of film over to the one hour place, and by the time the people came back that evening, they could have a picture ready for them. Now this is one of the things I didn't know is if you get up Thanksgiving Day, a lot of you watch here in the United States the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade in New York City. So what I didn't know was that you know Santa's at the end of the parade, you know, saying you know Merry Christmas to everybody. Is that at the end of the parade he arrives at the store by sleigh on the last floor, and his court takes over a large portion of one floor in the store. Now, I didn't realize now, that. Eaton's predated um, Macy's. Eaton, Eaton's predated Macy's. This the parade comes from Eaton's. And we'll put it this way: Eaton still has his parade in Canada. The United States no longer carries it because um, they used to have. I mean, back before she got out of the nunnery, I don't because I don't think that they were allowed to watch to parades and nunneries or not. But uh, thanks. No, but all the channels carried all of the Christmas parades. You know, they got a Christmas parade in Hawaii. I remember really? for years. They used to carry them all on TV. They used to, I mean, they used oh. to have the Jack Lord, for instance, would host every year on CBS the Hawaiian, you know, Christmas oh. parade. And they would have um, all these parades from, they'd have that the Mummers cool. Parade, all, for Philadelphia Mummers Parade, all of these oh. parades, Eaton's, all of them would be all dotted across the landscape. Today, they replaced the parades with things they think are more profitable, like dog shows and football games. Well, I love this part where it says the Macy Santa Claus is often said to be the real Santa Claus. <laughs> the yeah. real Santa. Did that come from Macy's PR department? Yeah. <laughs> uh, probably. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Quite often, the Santa, if and when he is detected to be fake, explains he is not the real Santa Claus, and he's just helping him out. Most young children understand this, like I tell you about my parents, that the real Santa is extremely busy around Christmas. Uh, that Santa, family part is Santa is something impersonated by a male head of the household or other. So, uh, okay, uh, here's a real good one on uh, sometimes television. I worked on a lot of television shows where they get, they try to do it humor, but they get very serious about Christmas things. I, I worked on an, um, an episode of Guns of, um, of, uh, of Have Gun Will Travel, where the, the guy, the rock musician Dwayne Eddy, was playing the character, um, uh, he was playing the Joseph and his wife and, and Richard Boone basically had to make the town behave. I worked on another episode of uh, Wagon Train where a guy that was playing Santa Claus died. Mayor, okay. Ward Bond was the guy, you know, we got more important things than do this for the children. So but they basically, they had a situation set up where they had to give thanks for Christmas. And uh, Ward Bond was not going to, you know, he's, you know, he, he delegated playing Santa Claus to someone else. 
and for some god unknown reason, the guy that played Santa Claus was a little guy, had a suit designed for a guy with a great big chest and a big tall man, fit Ward Bond. And then another one, I worked on... I worked, That's the Santa Claus yeah. he has to put on the outfit so then he becomes the next yeah. Santa Claus. But I did work on a motion, on a film short that won Academy Award for Best Short, mm -hmm. where basically it had um, J. Carroll Nash played an innkeeper, and, um, and um, what was his name, Anthony Caruso, played, who basically played lots of bad guys and Indians. He was also in the famous, uh, one of the episodes of Star Trek. He was Joseph and his wife, and he made uh, this, put the, the innkeeper basically tossed Caruso, who was Joseph and his wife out in, and three cowboys came by bearing gifts because they, they were gonna have a good hurrah time in town with the gifts they bought for the girls. So they gave him gifts. Gene Lockhart, who was Gene Lockhart's father, Gene, okay, they, Gene Lockhart played Scrooge in an early version of Christmas Carol, and his daughter played one of the characters in it. Uh, I don't know, Gene Lockhart played Bob Cratchit, is what it was. And um, I think Reginald Denny played Scrooge. But I worked, and I think, but they won Academy Award for Film Short. They got this great big star on this, you know, on this, uh, on this rest stop for, you know, for buses to stop back in the 1940s. He's going blinking on and off, and the three cowboys were drew, drawn to it. So they give this gift, and they give the gift to the newborn child, and basically, um, you know, the heart is warmed by seeing all of these people, you know, the, like Gene Lockhart, basically, he's giving, he's giving cigar, he's giving his precious cigars to everybody because it's like he's a proud daddy. His wife, who looks like the world's biggest snob on earth, I need more hot water and we need some clean sheets. And, and J. Carroll Nash's wife said, get the sheets out. And he said, but they're only for pay. Get the sheets out. Well, she's an Italian wife. You get the sheets out. And then he gets the Christmas spirit. He's giving everybody, everybody, the good drink stuff in the place to celebrate the birth of the child. Mm -hmm. So they get very serious at Christmas time. I've worked on a lot of Christmas specials in my life. And, um, you know, I, I, want, I never worked on a cartoon Christmas special. Since I was an animator, it always sort of made me feel bad. But the problem, Why? Well, because the, all of those things are done for a god awful well in advance. Yeah. And so you're always working on something else. But um, uh, basically, <laughs> schools are telling you how to be sad. I know that. The but, Santa school. Ooh, here's There's the actually one. fraternal order of real bearded Santa. I know, which is a union nowadays. Which basically, okay, basically this is all going to be illegal under Obama because uh, you, you have to pay them union wages, which basically most Santa Claus really don't get. But now, here's a good one. Letter writing to Santa. Ooh. As a child, did you ever write a letter to Santa? And did you ever wear, wonder where it went? Because you write to the North Pole. Oh, this is really, okay, folks, this is for real. The letter writing is taken serious by every bloody boat department in mm -hmm. the whole world. This is just not the United States. I mean, um, oh, it isn't. No, all over the world. I mean, uh, post offices, according to postal, we got postal union basically. Countries I know Macy's had one where you could leave your letter for Santa at Macy's. Yeah, we got here basically we got Germany, Australia, Austria, Bulgaria, Canada, Spain, Great Britain, France, Finland, Ireland, New Zealand, Portugal. Poland, Slovakia, Sweden. You know uh, what? Okay, Switzerland. here's the part that. Okay, go scroll down just a little bit. Because we, we've got down. all these, or down, all these countries, right? With the yeah. number of letters received, this is go, goes back. This is what about five years ago? Or yeah, something? this is the latest. But here, here's what surprised me. Some of these countries, like Germany, had five hundred thousand letters, yeah. right? Like Finland. Finland is not a very large country. No. Seven hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, France, right. but France, 1,200,000. I mean, Ireland had 100,000, but Finland, I thought Ireland was bigger than Finland. It is. It was, right? I know. You know so. Sweden has 150,000. I mean, you know, some of these you know, countries really aren't that big. Like Bulgaria has 500, okay. which is their old St. Nicholas one. Okay, and here's one too. What is, uh, I gotta get back. Okay, this one's a good figure for people that don't think that the Syrian letter writing Finland receives letters from 150 countries, uh, from kids from 150 different countries. Wow. Because they think that that's the, uh, that's the doorstop to the North Pole and Europe. Well, you know, where, where do the letters go if you just write to Santa Claus and North Pole? Um, a lot of them are answered. Where do they go to? 
they go to the post offices there, okay, um, <laughs> you know, I mean? no, uh, basically Canada has a special postal code for letters to Santa Claus. The United States has, uh, I think I go back up again, the United States has a post office that these things go to. Um, uh, okay. Um, there is the, the Santa this Claus is Operation Santa. Many post offices allow children to send letters to Santa Claus. They may be answered by postal workers or volunteers. It's an uh, educational benefit because it promotes literacy, writing, and other things. But almost they all go to your po they all post offices have a stamp. Most of them say North Pole on them. Oh, interesting. And so, if you want a North Pole holiday postmark through the United States Post Office. You're told to send your letter from Santa or holiday greeting card by December 10th to North Pole Holiday Postmark Postmaster 4141 Postmark Drive, Anchorage, Alaska. That's right. That's where they go wow. to. So they will have a North Pole stamp on it. So what do you do? You put it in an envelope? Yeah. Or you just put the same, you put it in an envelope, send it there? And then, then they open it and then, then they it send you the envelope back with this. It's, 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 it's a stamped letter inside a letter. They open up the letter and then send you the thing back. So you get a thing from North Pole. With the North Pole stamp and everything. Yeah. Let's see how neat that is, though. Can't can you just manufacture one with these? Well, no, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, like, you get these things that you could stamp on them. Can you just get a stamp? I know. Basically, what <laughs> happened, though, basically what happened was my father it's was... It's probably illegal to impersonate a postal no, stamp. No, my father was in the film business, folks. Same with my grandmother. Yeah. And uh, my, my father would... Um, Okay, we're not gonna. We we have. Because they would just tell the kids they have a special we postal had, mark. Uh, no, we, we we wouldn't do that. My dad, we might. Okay, in my mother's restaurants, they had an early form of video machines. You know, we had jukebox. We had film jukeboxes, and my father would take the children over. You know, not only uh, he would take other you know family members, the children over, and they go to one of my mother's restaurants, mm -hmm. and then they go sit down at the at a great like the dining room table. You know. You know, Santa Claus is going to pay the children a visit today. You know, you want, you know, so okay, we, you know, we'll go Christmas shopping. You take the children over. They sit at this big table and they said, Well, Santa Claus is going to make a personal visit to you. And they go, Ooh. And they said, And then all of a sudden you see, Ho, 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 ho. And on the screens of the, of the little, and the things all around the table would be Santa Claus making a personal thing to all the family children. Actually, you know what? You just made me think about it. To so write um, an article about how to get your letters answered by Santa. Yeah, I'll do that one. We've got a big deal right there. No, but that would be a special thing because this is how my family would help to bury the kids for a few hours because they did like about a 10, 15 minute thing of Santa Claus and then they say, oh, little Willie. I understand that you want this, and oh, do I see little Dan Dennis mm -hmm. over there? And you basically have to do, he got to cut off a fortune, folks. You know, you know, thing that you would not believe some of the Santa Clauses that we had. You know, that not Santa Claus, that Errol Flynn. <laughs> I mean, really? Yeah. <laughs> that not Santa Claus, isn't that Charlie Chaplin? Are you serious? Yeah. That's pretty no, cool. because um, people would play. This was a thing that was going along with you know Hollywood people in that time period. They would basically play Santa. Well, because you couldn't play Santa Claus for your own kids, right? You and they couldn't go somewhere else. But what you could do is you could get you could corral somebody to put on the the yeah, outfit your for, a, for yeah. You, you corral them for a few minutes. They put on the stuff, and then you'd have your you'd have your 16 millimeter camera. And then you go set it into the into the jukebox. You know, they make the print for a jukebox, and then they play the thing in there. And the little kids, you definitely. I mean, it was not one of the. Well, he's he's dying from pneumonia. He has to be there, you know. But he's not. You know, he's got every bone in his body broken. He has to be there <laughs> because when you get to, oh hi Jackie. You know, I like, understand it, that you you can, had to be can there. Can you imagine like disappointing the kids? It's like, well, Santa Claus didn't show up. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, no, Santa Claus always showed up because for a, 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 that for a little time in my my life, Santa Claus showed up by film. Nowadays they could do it by video really easy, but this was a big deal in the '40s and '50s to do something like that. So. I know, we got, I mean, see that, you got all of these people. In all these different countries answering letters from Santa Claus. Yeah. 
they can basically you can receive a letter through various agencies and organizations basically do this. Um, an example of public and private cooperation is an opportunity to, uh, for expatriate local children and parents to receive postmark mails and greeting cards from Santa during the December uh, in the Finnish Embassy in Peking, People's Republic of China, Santa Claus Village in Romania, Finland, the People's Republic of China's postal system, International Post Office. See, they're talking China, folks. They're, they're not like Christians, so what are they doing? They're, they're funneling Christmas Claus. mail through China. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Santa tracking the web. So, their web's created to various organizations that have purported to uh, purported to track Santa Claus, such as NORAD, Air Services Australia tracks it, the Santa Update Project, MSNBC, Bing Math Platform tracks Santa Project, you know, Dallas Fort Worth International Airport tracks Santa Project, Santa's Retro Radio, Radar, uh, the Lehigh Valley Project, NASA tracks Santa, uh, Fallen by the Wayside. Oh, is this how? NORAD started? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. This is this is funny. Yeah, it screwed up, so oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. You ever wonder how things start? Okay, NORAD, which everybody talks about tracking Santa. This was a nineteen fifty five series a <laughs> certain robot store in Colorado Springs ran an ad and gave the number to a Santa hotline except they mistyped it. <laughs> yeah. And the, the number was, and the children called the Continental Air Defense Command, CONAD. CONAD, yeah. Um, on Christmas Eve instead. Uh, uh, the director of operations, Colonel Harry Soup, received the first call from Santa, responded by telling children there were signs on radar that Santa was indeed heading south. The tradition, which began, continued oh, under the name NORAD, tracked Santa. When in 1958 and the 1958 Canada and the United States jointly created North American Air Defense Command, the tracking now can be done by the internet and NORAD's website. It was a screw up, but it worked. Because, <laughs> uh, because Could you it, imagine you know, the first call? Because, 